Did one of your animals die in there? That smell clings to you like a second skin. And breath makes my eyes water. Look at you. Wrapped up in your own little world. Incapable of thinking about anyone but yourself. And that's a reflection on you, Raymond. Raymond. Raymond! pre-wired for the computer and cable. The shower has water that squirts out from the walls. It's the bomb. Which I assume is a good thing. It's not good, it's... It's the bomb! Exactly. <laughs> Did you see the playhouse in the backyard? Can I check it out? Sure. <laughs> You've seen it three times. Application's been sitting on your desk for weeks. Don't feel pressure, Dr. Waters, but the Buckhead area is highly sought after. I can't guarantee its availability I much beyond... I know, I know. I'll just leave you to talk. Thank you. You've always said that once Jack wasn't a threat, you wanted to find some place with lots of windows and no bars on them. I'm only five minutes away. I can be here to watch Chloe. I'm just not sure that I can afford it, Angel. You know you can. Well, the school system it's is... the best in the city. I mean, Jack cannot possibly get to you now. Why are you holding on to this part of your life that was nothing but misery? Samantha Waters. But in our little corner of the planet, we're no strangers to finding bodies dumped. Normally, they got one slug in the head, two pinky rings, and names like Vinny or Cheech. Senator, there's very little about this case to which the word normally applies, which is why we're here. What was that? Uh, this place used to be Porterson's department store. It's scheduled for demolition, so they've been torching the girders. The first girl we found six weeks ago, she was stabbed once. Nice, neat. Thank you. No attempt at concealment. But you never did find her hands. No, we did not. Honey, you ruined my light. Can you believe that? Yeah, you've seen one decapitation. And I guess you haven't scooped up any heads floating down river. Listen, son, I got six weeks and four days till I punch you out. Now, the last thing I need on my watch is uncleared homicides, especially with broads turning up without heads or hands. If we all play nicely, I'm sure we can get it done within your time frame. Initial thoughts, Gracie? That as a society, we are going straight to hell. No clothes, no purse, no head. Unless the prints are on file somewhere, identification's going to be a bitch, which I assume was his intent. And no blood. It must have taken place elsewhere. Yeah. She's pretty well trained. How long? You figured. 10, 12 hours. Not enough time for missing persons. Where's Sam? We'll fax you all of our forensic reports and any other pertinent information. Are you not staying? We can do better work at our facility. It's 90 minutes by plane. We'll commute as necessary. John will stay. Work with you on the victimology. We'll have some laughs, huh? 35, 40? Approx. What are those slashes on her back? Looks like some type of tool. Gardening, maybe. You sure this place is gonna hold up? <laughs> it's as solid as a rock. She wasn't nude when he slashed her. Piece of her shirt? It's something. Or type of something we won't know till we test it. Bailey, I'm gonna put this through. First victim. The one without the hands. She was found here also? Mm-hmm. On this spot, virtually. Killer obviously didn't care if she was identified, I mean. Why didn't he take her head, too?
I was waiting for Grace to finish. Trying to get a sense of the place. Anything? No, not yet. Clear the area for you. I get the sense that he's trying to form a bond, uh, some kind of relationship with his victims. First victim was 22, single, Karol Bukowski, rent petition. Shop had male and female clients on which we're checking. The kid was gonna move to Los Angeles to make up for the movies. This victim was clearly older, but without an ID, we can kiss commonality goodbye. It may not matter. It always matters. We wanted a relationship with them. Well, I'm not sure that it was with them as people. I mean, their personalities, behavior, who they were, may not interest him. It's more like they provided parts. Objects of desire. I want to see where the first victim lived. He undressed the victims, but there was no sexual activity, right? No, there's no evidence of it, no. He's collecting trophies, possible stimulants. No, I don't think so. If he was in the throes of sexual excitement, I would expect the bodies to be left more haphazardly. For him, I don't think a relationship is about sex. It's about romance. Her hands that attracted him. I think it was her nails. She was a beautician. She had artificial nails. She kept them painted. I also found a local bus schedule in her apartment, so I don't think she had a car. She probably walked everywhere. So, killer could live or work in the neighborhood. Much as I hate to shoot your romance theory full of holes, evaluation of the chemical residue found on the skin of both victims: benzalkonium chloride, propylene glycol. Alcohol, 20%. Some kind of antiseptic. So they stripped them so we could clean them. That's a germ freak. I like the romantic angle. Why? I made that way. Chemicals don't lie. I vote freak. Could be both. In his mind, if his victims are literally clean, then so is he. And his romantic self-image is maintained because he's never soiled the relationship with sex. A hey, first... We magnify this little sliver of fabric Grace found in the wound. Then I'm gonna extrapolate using a custom CGI program, and hopefully I'll be able to reconstruct the original pattern compared to swatches on my home server. Here's the original sample. Reconstructing. And now, searching for correlation. This could take some time. You're asking me to leave. Reconstructing in front of an audience makes me nervous.
It's after two. You should be home. Yeah. What is it, Sam? The other one you were profiling. How often did your personal life intrude upon your work? It's part of the gig. Any profile is filtered for the experience of the profiler. No, but I'm, I'm not talking about just filtering. I'm talking about actually taking over. I mean, this is more than just some abstract sense of a killer trying to form a bond. I, I keep getting the image of an actual wedding. Well, it's the logical extension of the relationship he wants with his victims, at least in his mind. No, it, it's going through my mind. See, I don't know if it's going through him. Today's my anniversary. Tom and I would have been married 12 years. I'm sorry, Sam. How many anniversaries have you spent alone? Oh, two different things. Yours was an unexpected tragedy. Mine was a matter of convenience. Can I buy you a drink or three? <laughs> Jameson's Irish. Look, maybe you are being thrown by the timing, but maybe not. If he's at some level the romantic you think he is, your sense of what's going through his mind could still be valid. For the moment, we can at least assume this. Somewhere in Newark, there's a guy who's got one hell of an inventory in his freezer. It is pitch black, Raymond. How can you work in the garden? I'm hungry. Run out and get a pizza. I'm waxing my legs. When you come back, you can help me put on this skin conditioner. Pepperoni and mushroom. Don't get anchovies. It's like eating a high brown. Sure, I could be at school in eight minutes. It's definitely bomb. The bomb. Oh, sorry. So why can't we? There are a lot of reasons why we should. It's just hard right now, you know. Whenever I have a tough decision to make, you always say, if you know down deep that something's right, it's right. Take your own advice, Mom. Advice is like a Christmas gift. It is better to give than to receive. Your dad told me that once. So that's why this is hard. I think about him even when I don't know him. But there are a few days in the year when it's just really... Sarah Kenson's father died. And they go visit him at the cemetery a lot. How come you don't visit Dad? Because that's not where he is. I guess it's just the idea of going to a new place and starting over and knowing that he's not going to be a part of it. But he will be. Why, what's I supposed to be? 
While you and Univac were going through God knows how many theoretical fabric permutations... It's not a Univac. I was doing an old-fashioned chemical analysis on that itty-bitty sliver we have on hand. It's not a Univac. Traces of glutaraldehyde. It is used to clean dental and medical instruments. Victim number two was wearing a dental smock, surgical scrubs, some type of clothing that links her to the medical field. Is Bailey aware? He will be in a minute. And just so you know, it's not a Univac. Victim two is a medical work. Are there any hospitals or clinics in the area of the kills? No, but there are at least 25 or 30 doctors and dentist offices. Check out their personnel and cross-reference that with any possible missing persons calls. John. John. Tell Grace I bought every gardening hand tool in Newark. None of them match the slash wounds on the victims. I don't know what the hell he used. How's the profile coming? Piece by piece, John. It's not something you slap together in five minutes. Well, hurry it up. There aren't as many laughs down here as I thought. out, Bailey. I think he feels imprisoned by a relationship, maybe. His marriage? Based on the intuitions you had before? Well, I don't think this is about creating a new idealized relationship. I think it's about trying to symbolically deconstruct one that he's already in. Malone, you have a blood type match on the headless lady, a dental hygienist whose boss reported her missing. Claudia Allen. She's been a hygienist for 20 years. Clean teeth, emphasis on cleanliness in general. And the antiseptic he used on his victims. The killer's wife could be a hygienist. This hygienist could be the killer's wife. No, she was never married. Worked for the same dentist her whole career. How old? 43. The neighbors say she was big into entertainment. This was her birthday party three weeks ago. These are surrogate kills. The fingernails on the first victim and the smile or the hair of this one. At some point, you may turn on her. I'd expect it. My guess is when we find her corpse, she'll have long nails, lots of teeth, and red hair. If the killer isn't 40, he's probably close to it. Age in a man's life when he looks around and asks, is this all there is? That is about the time. Wait. His wife dominates him. He can't or won't confront her. He's probably plodding, very quiet, repetitive, because we know he made the first two drops at the exact same spot. He'd, he'd work at a place where there is a constantly changing source of women, a fast food restaurant, a car wash. A... First victim didn't drive. Right, right. I'll uh, scratch that then. Maybe a laundromat or a market. I'll have Lieutenant Charles School deploy his troops. First kill was six weeks ago, then the day before yesterday. What's the trigger in the event? Accumulated frustration and anger? Maybe he's having an affair. He realizes if we're free of the wife. No, I think an affair would be too overt. Uh, chances for confrontation would be too great. And if there is another woman, it's probably someone who he sees at work, or I don't know, a, a fantasy figure, a model on a billboard. Raymond! Why are you never here when I need you? Must I do everything myself? Mother's back itches, Raymond. You know how she gets when her back itches. Psoriasis is the curse of the sensitive. They should have a telephone for it, you know, like they have about time. I threw out that soup you made the other day. Something about it did not taste right. To the left. The other left. I don't know why you have problems with the simplest tasks. Those aren't my genes, I can tell you that much. My mother was descended from French royalty. That's where I get my bone structure, my appreciation for art and literature. If she hadn't emigrated, I'd be in Paris this very minute. I'd have married a dauphin instead of your father. Another overachiever. I left a list on the counter. Get the day old bread. It's just as good for toast and half the price. And don't forget my denture adhesive this time. You know what else is on the list? 
Those caramels you like so much. Mm. Uh, oh, worse than ever. Your hygiene is just... <laughs> Why couldn't you follow Franklin's example? May he rest in peace. Your brother knew the value of hygiene. So ironic that he was the one with such potential. Lower. Oh, that's my good boy. Okay, victim one and two lived 15 blocks apart. Kara Bukowski worked at a beauty shop here. Claudia Allen, the hygienist, worked four blocks away. So here's our primary search area. You think he made the grab when they left work? You know where they lived. Maybe he made deliveries. I don't know. Residential areas provide cover for an abduction. There were no witnesses. I think they became victims partly because of where they lived. They're outside the neighborhoods and the fact that they were both Sagittarians, these women have nothing in common. It's almost as if... We got a suspect. Flips burgers at a diner. He's got a list of priors for assault that dates back seven years. Where'd you find them? Hanging around the department store where the dead bodies were found. African-American, age 39. Victims were white. These guys almost never cross racial lines. And I doubt that you would have any priors. I'm going on your profile. Lieutenant, these crimes and victims are very specific. They're not part of an ongoing series of assaults. I got a viable suspect downstairs. I'm not going to kick him just because you don't agree. She didn't tell you to kick him. All I'm hearing is negativity, and I am trying to close this case. So you can pack up your pension and move to Hialeah? Don't lay that on me. Retirement ain't the issue. For the sake of your suspect, it can't come too soon. Ice tea, anyone? Are you prepared to let this guy walk? It's your call, Lieutenant. Hold him, interrogate him, do what you want. Lieutenant, the man that we're looking for is not a common thug. He's more like a... Like a robot. He's someone that you wouldn't even notice if you were standing next to him. Oh, hey, hey. I said paper, not plastic. Today, Speedy. You're on break, Lisa. Okay. Raymond? Raymond, I I'm really enjoying Laser Night. It's really exciting. I'm going to finish it on break, and then you can have it back, if that's OK. You have a nice smile. Wait. I'm sure we can work it out. This bay leaf is on special, and you Jack. charge me full price. Jack. That's highway robbery. Uh, I'll get a man. Oh, of... who wants this bay leaf anyway? Danger, Jack. Pete. This place has been going down downhill ever since a gross been sold. Oh, ma'am. It's filthy. It's filthy. You can smoke it. That's the selection. You don't honor the double chew box. I'd be better off going to a chain store. Davis Leader, 61, widow. He got out her larynx. He had a divorce. The voice of his wife. The most changed. Left to the same place he did his surgery. Different drop site. He's gonna set himself free. Almost guy uses this place to crash. He left the scavenge for food around six, came back just before nine and found her. Go back over all the potential work environments. Concentrate on the guy's workday shifts. Lieutenant? Her voice triggered the kill. The first victim was 22. The second one was 43. This woman is 61. It isn't his wife. It's his mother. Mm. I love Lalique. Mm. My mother and father got me these. Of course, they were appalled that I was marrying someone so common. <laughs> but I was headstrong. Raymond, my life is proof that children should listen to their parents. <laughs> Vacuuming, dusting, polish the silver, 
have to redo my nails, but it was worth it. Raymond. Raymond. I have something to show you. Isn't it lovely? With the proper clothing, you can attract the proper girl. It's so important, dear. Come on. All right. And, uh, someday you'll have to start thinking about moving out on your own. Huh. Hey. Stitch here and there, and it's perfection. Get over here. Wait this minute. Sit. Open. 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 I still have hope for you. I still have hope for you. We talked to 17 plotting, semi-mute, bus boys, hash slingers, shelf stackers, and laundromat attendants, all with alibis up the yin. Our best lead may be his mother. It was probably in her late 60s, based on the ascending ages of the victims. Physical traits we ascribe to his wife would still apply. Right, the teeth, the nails, the voice. He's trapped by the old lady, so he kills innocent women. He's probably a widow. Her son could be her only child. George is going through his social security records. You know, you bring a kid into this world, and then you smother him. Why doesn't he just offer or leave? Well, he can't do either. Not yet. Well, she could be an invalid using her infirmity to hold him hostage. Or it could be some sort of psychological blackmail, which is far more insidious. Or uh, they could simply need each other, uh, need to feed off each other. Raymond, sweetheart. I know how much you like them. Always been my baby. What's a mother without a baby? Of course, we've had our ups and downs. That incident with little Jessica Meehan. Who took care of that? I did. He's only 13. I said, he's my baby. Because you were bad. One shouldn't have feelings like that. Thank goodness you don't have them anymore. I was there for you, Raymond. Wasn't I? Wasn't I? That's what a mother's for. To be there for her child. Asking nothing in return.
talk about laser knot. I've been leaving messages. I guess you never got them. Bye. What the hell are you doing here? Well, I couldn't sleep. Haven't you heard insomnia could be life-threatening? What are you doing here? I just kept thinking, you know, that maybe they missed something. Yeah. We figured it was a couple of blocks from the wire factory. Thank you. Leader. Mavis Leader. Must have been on the way home from the market. Then sure it's easy. The prune juice. Okay. Lady support hose. We've already established that the killer could work at a market. Does a woman who wears dentures eat caramels? I went over Mavis's autopsy report. She didn't wear dentures. But his mother may. Merely some of these things may belong to the killer. He could have lost them in the confusion after the murder. I'll have George check Medicare records. The dentures may show up in the file. Probably dozens of markets in the kill zone. The first victim bought her nail polish at Grossman's. Where are you on the Medicare search? Within the 12 square blocks of the neighborhood, we have 93 widows over the age of 65 who have received payments for denture work during the last calendar year. OK, want to hear some more bad news? The list is growing by the minute. Get it to me, George. 
There are seven Grossman's stores in the kill zone. This guy has no employees that even remotely fit our profile, and he sees elderly women with annoying voices and long nails every day, says he's married to one. Six more stores to go. Yes? Mrs. Boudreaux, I'm Lisa Darden. I'm a friend of Raymond's. Hmm. He never mentioned you. We work together. Is he here? He's occupied right now. I, I just wanted to give these back to him. I'll see he gets them. I've been calling, and I want to make sure he's been getting my messages. What do you know about my son? What do you think you know? That he's a sweet-natured boy who reads about action heroes? How blessedly naive you are. Do you know where he spent most of his childhood? Did he tell you about that place? He never... No one ever talks about places like that or about why people have to be confined in them. Of course, he's better now. The illness manifests itself only occasionally. But if I were you, dear, I'd stay away from him and from this house and never come near again. Raymond, darling. We've got three possibilities that fit the profile. Jacob Petrie, a butcher's assistant. He's my favorite. Raymond Boudreaux, a box boy at Grossman's number six. And David Ryan, a restocker at a convenience store. I gave them all to the little ball guy. Great. Okay, victim number one lived here. We believe that's roughly where the attack took place. Victim number two here. And victim number three here, less than two blocks from the wire factory where she was killed. And CIC research indicates the killer's home base is most likely somewhere in the middle. Now, the lieutenant's eliminated 34 of the names we got from Medicare, which still leaves... What if he doesn't live in the middle of the grid? What if, as he gets emotionally closer to killing his mother, he's also getting closer geographically? It's too easy. No, not if you think of the kills as psychological hurdles. With each one, he's become a little more sure of himself. Ramping himself up to take the final step of actually killing his mother. That would put the finish line right about there. We'd be cutting our search area by two thirds. That's a major risk, sir. It's just outside the original grid. Millbrook Avenue and 17th. Dorothy Boudreau, 427 Millbrook. Boudreau's one of our guys. Get units out to 427 Millbrook, John. Ben. Oh, Raymond, you're a picture. Don't. We'll be late for the matinee. Someone delivered those. I told her we were otherwise engaged. Well, she was obviously unacceptable. No social graces whatsoever. And hardly what I would call attractive. Believe me, I was doing you a favor. She won't bother you again. She liked me. Rain. Dear, listen to Mother. She liked me. She wasn't worthy. You're well rid of her. What does someone like that, a mere child, know about love and caring? Oh. oh. Raymond. God's name. Where? Where? 